guys, today in our first video for AP Physics C, we are going to start talking about kinematics and motion in one dimension. So a lot of this stuff is going to be a review for you guys from last year, um, and hopefully it'll go pretty quickly. There's going to be a couple of um, harder problem solving exercises in this PowerPoint, but other than that, the information, the core information as far as kinematics is concerned is going to be the same. So the first thing we need to discuss is the difference between distance and displacement and velocity and speed. Uh, just remember that distance describes the total distance that you travel, and it's a scalar quantity. It doesn't describe the direction that you went. Displacement, however, does have a direction attached to it, and it describes how far you ended up from where you started. So it does have magnitude and direction, so displacement is a vector, distance is a scalar. Speed and velocity work the same way. Um, speed describes the rate at which the distance changes, and it's a scalar, and then velocity will always have a direction attached to it. Sometimes it will have the actual word, north, south, east, west, left, right, up, down. Um, and then sometimes it'll just have a positive or a negative sign to describe to us whether the object is moving forward or in the reverse direction. Um, average velocity is, of course, the, av the uh, displacement divided by the time. So here's a, just a little example that goes through the difference between all of those things. The first part is talking about my husband's stupid dog, and he is going to run 20 feet to get a stick, and then he carries the stick back to me only 15 feet. Uh, so what is the total distance the dog travels in this example? Let me see if I can, ooh, don't look at that yet. So the total distance the dog travels is, of course, the 20 feet that he went forward and then the 15 feet he went back, so that's 35 meters. Oh, I'm sorry, not meters, feet. And then the net displacement of the dog, if he starts here, goes forward 20, comes back only 15, his net displacement is only 5. And then this says, let's say the dog jogs 20 feet in one second, the 15 feet back in 1.5. And then what is the dog's average speed? Well, average speed is your distance divided by your time. So his distance is 35 feet, and the time is 2.5. That gives us an average speed of about 14.6 meters per second. What is the dog's average velocity? Velocity, remember, is change in displacement over time. So your displacement is only 5 meters, and again, your time is 2.5. That leaves your velocity being 2 meters per second. Your velocity is so much less than your speed because your velocity took into account your direction. If you look at the dog's overall travel that he went through, he's only moving 5 meters in about 2.5 seconds. All right, so... Um, here's another example, two examples for you here. The first one um, normally takes Zach 10 minutes to travel five miles. So I'll go ahead and let you guys read that if you need to pause it. And I'm, I'm going to suggest that as I go through these examples with you guys, pause the video and try to work them out on your own before you see my solution because all of these things should be a review for you. All right. So um, delays along the road cause traffic to slow to 20 miles per hour for the first two miles of the trip. Will he be late for class? So the first thing we need to do is figure out how long it's going to take him to travel those first two miles. And um, when we do that, we can say 20 miles per hour equals distance over time. So your, or I'm sorry, displacement. So your displacement is going to be tw two miles over time. So it's going to take him 0.1 hours to travel those first two miles, which is six minutes. So for the last three miles, he can accelerate or he can go his normal speed, which it looks like his normal speed is uh, a mile every two minutes or 0.5 miles per minute. So with that mentality, for the last three miles of the trip, it should take him six minutes as well. So six plus six is 12 minutes. So he should get to class with three minutes to spare. All right, the second example is a little bit trickier. When you first read it, it might seem like 
overwhelming. But let's go ahead and draw a picture for our problem. Always draw a picture for what we're trying to solve. We have between these two trains is 60 kilometers. And each one is moving at 15 kilometers per hour. And it says a bird is flying back and forth between the trains at 20 kilometers per hour. So here's my bird. I can't draw. Bird flies back and forth between the trains at 20 kilometers per hour. How far does the bird fly? And the bird is going to fly back and forth until these two trains pass each other. So it sounds like there's a lot going on in this problem, but if you just think of it as the bird is in flight for however long it takes these two trains to meet. So if they're going to meet in the middle, they're both traveling the same uh, velocity. If they meet in the middle, then they'll each travel half of the distance between them. So this guy is going to travel 30 kilometers, and this guy will go 30 kilometers as well. So it will take, if they're traveling 15 kilometers per hour, it'll take them two hours before they meet each other. So essentially, the bird is in flight for two hours. So if the bird is going 20 kilometers per hour, distance over two hours, that means he will travel 40 kilometers. All right, so let's just talk a little bit, review about how to graph um, velocity. Remember that when we graph velocity, we are graphing um, distance versus time. And the slope of this line will give us what our velocity is. Now, um, last year we just dealt with Typically, we dealt with straight lines unless we were looking at an acceleration, which an acceleration, of course, on a distance-time graph looks like this. Uh, we're going to get more into graphs later when we start talking about calculus, but for right now, um, just remember that the slope will always give you your, the velocity of your object for on a distance-time graph. On, um, yeah. And then, of course, you can have negative slopes, which represent your negative velocity. Um, you can have uh, lines on your distance time graph that travel below um, the x-axis. And we'll talk a little bit more about, or we'll review a little bit more about what all those graphs mean uh, later this week. Okay, let's talk about acceleration now. Acceleration is the rate of change at velocity. Its units are meters per second squared, and if you remember its formula, it's change in velocity over time. Always remember to be careful with the direction of acceleration. Negative acceleration doesn't necessarily mean that the object is slowing down. Um, and I want you to think of some scenarios where acceleration could be negative, but not necessarily going slower. And I'll ask you that in class tonight. All right, so here's a quick little acceleration um, question. Cheetah can accelerate from 0 to 96 uh, in 2 seconds. Corvette requires 4.3. So the cheetah's initial speed is 0, final velocity is 96, and we want to change this into meters per second because the time they gave us is in seconds, and it, they ultimately want us to compare it to gravity. So let's go ahead and change that. So 1,000 divided by 3,600, and... Give you 26.7 meters per second. All right, so we have velocity 26.7 meters per second divided by the time 4.5. Ooh, sorry, two seconds for the cheetah. That gives the cheetah 13.33 meters per second squared acceleration, and the Corvette should have about six meters per second acceleration. They want you to compare them to gravity or the free fall acceleration. So when we do that, um, we figure out that the cheetah actually accelerates at a rate of about 1.35 what we call g's, and the Corvette's only about 0.6 g's. Uh, a g is 9.8, so this is like saying it's 1.35 times the acceleration of gravity. I remember these lovely kinematics equations. I don't think anybody really forgot them. Um, the last one I don't think we did too much in, in my class, but it does exist and it is there. It might be a new one for some of you guys. I'm not going to go over this too much because we did a lot of it last year and it should be something you guys remember. If not, write it down, make a note. Um, there's a quick example here with um, 
free fall. I would really like you guys to do this one on your own. I will check your answer tomorrow in class. Ooh. Because that's a pretty straightforward kinematics problem. Um, this one is also a really straightforward kinematics problem. I'd like you to do this one as well um, on your own. This example and then the previous one I will check in class tomorrow. All right, this is the one I kind of want to talk about a little bit because it brings up the idea of two objects moving in the same uh, reference frame and um, I just want to review it because it's probably one of the trickier things to understand when it comes to um, kinematics in general. So we have Riley who's speeding at 25 meters per second. A cop sees him and accelerates at a rate of 5 meters per second. What does the police car catch the speeding car? So here's Riley's car. We're going to do a little top-down view. And he's traveling at 25 meters per second. So that's all we know about him. He has no acceleration. Um, so he's keeping a constant velocity. When he passes the cop car, which we will denote by a little siren, the cop car takes off after him. The cop car is starting from rest, and it accelerates at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. Whenever you're doing physics problems, guys, always get in the habit of drawing diagrams as well as writing all your givens and variables on there. Most of you guys are really good about that, but just a reminder um, at the new year. So when the police car catches up to Riley's car, what about the two things will be the same? And a lot of students mistakenly say, well, their velocity will be the same. No, not necessarily. Um, because Riley essentially got a head start. He was already traveling at a pretty fast speed before the cop ever took off. So by the time the cop catches up to Riley's speed, he's going to be way behind him. So in reality, the cop actually needs to travel much faster than him to catch up to him. So the velocity will not be the same whenever they catch up to one another. What will be the same, though, is their position. They'll be in the same exact spot. So um, let's come up with a, an equation for what Riley's doing. So Riley's car only has one equation that can, can describe his motion, and that's distance over time or displacement over time because he has a constant velocity. The police car, however, is accelerating. So for the police car, I can use any one of those four kinematics to describe what it's doing. I have initial velocity. I have acceleration. And I want to find position. So I have a couple of options. I have this guy. Or I also have this guy. The second one is going to be a little tricky to use because I don't know anything about the police car's final velocity. That's going to be hard for me to determine, and so that's probably not a good equation for me to use. What I do want to use, though, is this one. Um, figuring out what which one to use just is going to take a little bit of practice for some of you, and um, I forgot what I'm going to say this. And it's okay if you choose the wrong one the first time. You'll figure it out pretty quick that it's not going to give you the answer that you need. So let's just try the second one. All right. So for Riley, I have 25 equals x over t. And then for the police car, I have change in x equals he's not traveling at any initial speed, so that's just 0. And then 1 half 5t squared. All right, I told you that when they catch up to one another, their positions will be equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this formula and set their positions equal to one another. Equals x. And so these, this x and this x should be exactly the same. So we have 25t equals 1 half times 5 times t squared. Um, this is 2.5. Divide both sides by t and divide both sides by 2.5, you get that the cop car catches up to him after 10 seconds. And then how fast is the police car traveling when it catches up to Riley? Well, now we have to do a second kinematic. And if 
for our purposes, we're going to apply this one because it's easy. The initial velocity is 0, acceleration is 5, time is 10, which means the final velocity is 50 meters per second. All right, that is it for a basic kinematic review. The next video you guys get will be all about how to put calculus on top of all of this kinematic stuff. So have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.